Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. In case you're not aware, I recently published a C++ Best Practices book. In this book, I tried to distill the most common mistakes that I see people make when writing C++ today. And I tried to make this book literally as short as I could and try to get in all of the information necessary, because I've learned that people don't tend to read uh, very long explanations of things. They want short, succinct examples and things that they can share with their coworkers and friends. So that's what this book is. It's available on leanpub.com, and I have a link to that in the show description. And it is also now available as a print edition, if you are interested in that. And there are links to both color and black and white versions that are available with Amazon's print-on-demand service. So uh, I've sold about 1,800 copies so far, and uh, you can see here it's 130 pages and about 13,000 words. Again, not very long, but um, I think it covers the most important aspects of mistakes that people commonly make today. And uh, you can come and look at the table of contents down here on LeanPub and see exactly what uh, topics I cover if that is interesting to you. Thanks for checking that out if you get the opportunity. Now in this episode, I want to cover features from C++ 11, 14, and 17 that you still cannot use today in 2021. This episode is being recorded on January 15th of 2021, and I am using CPP references, standards, uh, compiler compliance chart here to give us an idea what features we can and cannot use from the various compilers and the various C++ standards that have existed. Now, this doesn't go back to C++ 98, and honestly, I don't know if there are any features from C++ 98 that are not yet implemented by any compiler. I think they've all implemented C++ 98 at this point, although um, if you've been around for a while, you, you do know that that was actually a long time coming. It took a while for the compilers to actually be able to support C++ 98. So what we have here is, like I said, all the features from C++ 11 to C++ 17. I'm not going to talk about features from C++ 20 because the standard was only finished a few weeks ago. It would be a little silly to complain about um, C++ 20 features that are missing in our compilers today. And take this whether or not you want to as a complaint or just an observation about what does and does not exist in each compiler standard. And a couple of these things, uh, actually, well, one thing in particular, we're going to come back and make our own episode, a separate episode about a little bit later on. So starting with the C++11 library features, you might notice here garbage collection and reachability based leak detection. And it is listed as being supported, but as a no-op in each compiler. Now, I'm guessing you've probably not heard about garbage collection in C++. That will be the next episode that I'm going to record, and the one that I plan to air immediately after this one. So if we then scroll up to C++11's core language features that are or are not supported by our compilers, there's some interesting things here. Like, it actually took uh, Visual Studio relatively late, 2015 before they supported C++11 attributes and some of these dynamic initialization destruction with concurrency. This is also known as magic statics. And if you've watched my video, it's episode three, I think it was one of my very earliest ones, uh, the cost of using statics, then you'll know something about that one. But this right here, garbage collection and reachability based leak detection. Yes, in fact, C++11 actually does specify a garbage collection mechanism, but no compiler has ever implemented it. So this is definitely a feature that you cannot use today, even though it is 2021 and it is a feature from C++11. Now in full disclosure, I believe that there is currently a proposal for C++23 to actually remove this part of the language uh, from the standard since it was never used. And you also might notice, by the way, that we've got um, many compilers here, Digital Mars, C++, and everything when we're talking about C++11. Our spreadsheet of compilers tends to shrink as we get into newer, newer language standards. Uh, and a couple of these things also kind of stand out as interesting, like Clang, since it is one of the most new compilers that we have 
NR available set of compilers. Basically, a lot of these things from C11 and 14, they just, yes, it's just supported. If you have any official released version of Clang, then you have support for these features. Okay, so that's C11, not a big deal. Moving up to C14, I don't believe we find anything here, except we will note again that it took Visual Studio Standard Library a little while to catch up on these things, um, but by by Visual Studio 19, Visual Studio 2015, yeah, however they keep track of their version numbers here, we actually have uh, huge wide support for 11 and 14. Now this one, emitting and extending memory allocations, this is our, the, we're in the C++ 14 core language features. This is heap elision, uh, effectively, and I've done an episode on heap elision in the past. Now, uh, this says NA here for GCC, and it's, it's not a yes or no thing here because it's kind of up to the compiler whether or not they want to support it. It's a, an ability to optimize the code, not a requirement at all. But we should actually note that GCC now does do some heap elision. Clang just kind of has done this forever. So not a big deal here. Sized deallocation. It looks like NVIDIA's compiler, for some reason, never got that support. Now the title of this episode is Features That You Still Cannot Use Today in 2021. Now the point that I want to make here is if you care about cross-platform capability of your code, then these are features that you still cannot use today in 2021. All right, so now we're getting to C17's features, and this is where we're going to see the bulk of the gaps. So if you look here at uh, shared pointer and weak pointer with array support, it says that Apple Clang is currently missing this, which I find a little weird because Apple Clang tends to mostly stay with Clang's lib C implementation. Uh, so this might be an error in our CVP reference. I don't have a Mac. I don't have the ability to test this. And, and interestingly, it's an episode uh, topic that I have never covered on C++ Weekly. So that's a little bit, um, could be a problem for you. And this is where we start to see a lot of the divergence here. Uh, elementary string conversions. What is this? Like it's yellow across the board. What do we, what is this? This is to cars and from cars. Now this is supposed to be a relatively simple feature and it's just a way of converting from a string to a number, that is, to either a floating point or an integral number or from the number back into a string and you have to give it buffers and pointers to things and it's supposed to do these things for you in C++17. Turns out that this is actually way harder to implement than anyone actually thought it was going to be. So we've only got, uh, let's see, no floating point capability in GCC11, no floating point cap capability in Clang 7, so it's still not supported, and uh, Apple Clang 10. So if you happen to use Mac OS, you'll probably notice at some point that the version numbers that Apple Clang has has absolutely nothing to do with the version numbers that Clang actually releases. So this is again where we see some of these divergence of things here, but no floating point. Uh, Visual Studio is the only one that actually supports and you have to get pretty darn late here. Let's see, uh, Visual Studio 2019 16.4. And if I recall correctly, this is a topic that STL at Microsoft has actually done a couple of conference talks about. Okay, so we have that. That's the first thing that we really can't use. Besides um, our garbage collector, which I said we'll do another episode about that, elementary string conversions don't really have the ability to use that. Uh, C++17 should refer to C11 instead of C99. Uh, yeah, okay, so that probably won't affect your daily to day C++ programming, it looks like missing a uh, lined alloc uh, from Visual Studio. Mathematical special functions. I did an episode on this a long time ago. We don't have support for this in Clang's standard library yet. So this is libc++ and this is going to be your default standard library on Mac OS. So again, if you care about cross-platform capability, you can't use that feature. Polymorphic memory resources. I've done what? seven episodes on polymorphic memory resources now. Again, not in libc++, so we can't actually use that feature yet. Uh, the file system library, this is interesting. 
because file system, uh, some of us who've been around for a while think, oh, well, it's boost file system. You just copy that in, no big deal. But it's actually like if you didn't, for whatever reason, couldn't use boost file systems implementation, needed to implement your own, then it's actually a really huge chunk of the standard library to implement. And it looks like GCC is still missing some feature. Let's see, it has a non-conforming basic fstream path overload. So not a very big deal perhaps. So I guess we can argue that we can use the file system library today. Hardware interference size. Something I have not done an episode at all on. I've debated doing an episode on this because it actually comes back around to the last couple of episodes that I did on PMR when I talked about false sharing. And with hardware destructive interference size and hardware constructive interference size, it's actually possible to ask the compiler, how far apart do I need to space these things in memory so that I don't get false sharing between them, or if I want intentionally to have true sharing between them, then I can use the converse of this, the destructive versus constructive interference size. Um, so super interesting possibilities here. Uh, if you're like really trying to tune your code to your hardware, then you can ask your compiler for this. Uh, but we only have that in Visual Studio. We don't have that in Clang or GCC, so that's a feature you can't use yet. And the Parallelism TS. I am going to be recording an episode shortly that is specifically about the parallel algorithms in C++17. And we'll see here that GCC has it. Now note there's another asterisk. It says requires linking with dash LTBB. This is because GCC actually took Intel up on their offer to use the thread building blocks library to actually provide the GCC standard library with parallel standard algorithms. And the Clang uh, C, uh, libc++ did not do that, so we don't have it in Apple Clang or in Clang's uh, standard libc++ yet. No access to parallel algorithms. But Visual Studio did get this in 2017 version 15.7, whenever that was released. And this took a considerable amount of effort to implement. If you happen to have been um, reading uh, any of the tweets from the developers on this, then you would have followed along with the development of it on Twitter like I did, which is actually pretty interesting. So uh, we see here the Intel Parallel STL, by the way. They, of course, implemented the Parallelism TS, and this is the one that is being used by GCC. And again, Visual Studio has their own implementation. Now, we see the Embarcadero uh, C++ Builder standard library. This is largely based off of uh, Clang and Clang standard library, so it's really not surprising that they have these features. But as soon as you get into Cray or Sun's C++ implementations, that is, uh, there's just no C++ 17 support at all. So that's the C++ 17 library features, and we're going to see pretty much the same thing here um, across the board for the C++ core language features. Um, but it looks we're pretty good. There's no core language features from C++17 that we can't use today on our three major compilers, but we do have just a couple little gaps if we happen to be using Intel's C++ compiler. They have not removed trigraphs yet, for example. Um, so I, I think we're, we're pretty good there. So uh, there you have it. These are the things, this is this current status, the state of 11 through 17 as of January 15th, 2021. Um, if you care about cross-platform capability on your code, there's definitely a few things that you're missing. And well, that's really all I wanted to say. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of C++ Weekly, perhaps a little bit interesting historical look on things. I'm going to now try to record the episode on garbage collection, which will be a little difficult since no one has ever implemented it. But maybe we can have a talk about what it does.